Hello, I'm Derek Carr. I am the leader of the volunteer ministry here at St. Stephen's Church. I need your help. The church needs your help. So we are looking now for leaders, our helpers, for our SSC security team. So what does that look like? What, what do you even need from us? Oh, so I'm asking for people that may have strong communication skills. I'm asking for people who can make good judgment, not be impulsive. You know, just make sure that you're able to help someone else who may not be able to help themselves. Now, this is all for in light of something uneventful may happen, but we want to be prepared and we want to make sure that we have a safety plan in place. And guess what? If you volunteer for that ministry, you can help us see that through. Now, one thing that would be helpful if you are a former police officer, military, EMS, artwork, any kind of service job, we would love to have you be a part of this ministry. Listen, if this is interesting to you and it's something that you want to do, feel free to reach out to me, Derek Carr, at dcarr at ssclive.org. Look, the church needs you. Thank you. Hey y'all, Maddie's just open. Let's go! What you like about Maddie's? Everything. <laughs> and she has come over to Maddie's kitchen to purchase about three, four dinners over here. <laughs> food is so tasty. She, you know, second only to my own, but you know, this is, this is much better. <laughs> What's your favorite thing, Miss Vicky Cook? Fried chicken. Huh? <laughs> this is something about chicken. For one thing, I like the owner of Miss Maddie. It begins there. <laughs> of course, Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky is the absolutely. Miss Vicky, she's so welcoming and she she's about the community. So I just love Miss Vicky. I love the presentation. I love the atmosphere. The best soul food your your taste buds can handle. Okay. I love the baked chicken. Well, most of all, I love that gravy that goes on the chicken. It is mm mm good. <laughs> so Miss Jones, I see you got a plate in your hand, and that's from Maddie's kitchen. What you got, girl? Well, I have greens, mac and cheese. You have to have a little sweet potatoes, the extra right, side right, to right. go with that mac and cheese. <laughs> and of course, her delicious baked chicken with yeah. gravy. Yeah. And now, if she's the second witness to say something about this baked chicken, I mean, mm -mm good. <laughs> uh, I'm about to get me some of that baked chicken it's, with some gravy. Don't All right. Get it. The best potato salad. The best uh, mac and cheese. How about this? What about greens? Yes. With the little cabbage added into it and some cornbread on the side. I mean, mm -mm good. Man, you can't get this anyplace else. And it's gonna be what? Mm mm good. <laughs> Hey, my St. Stephen Church family and friends, this is Kevin James here. You know, I remember an old song we used to sing that says, He's done so much for me, I just can't tell it all. And I get so excited when I personally think about all that God has done for me and my family during these uncertain times. I cannot tell it all. Family, we can't ever repay Him for His goodness, but we can be obedient and give back what He requires. 2 Samuel 24, 24 says, The king replied, I will not offer sacrifices to the Lord.
Mystic Wand. Welcome to the pre-worship experience. It's now known as The Scene. He decided to die just to save me. Amen. Yeah. We are so glad to be here this Easter Sunday morning. So glad to be in the Lord's presence one more time. If you are listening, please ask that you share this link. If you're on your way to church, be safe. But I'm telling you, you want to get a word. Uh, the choir sung at 8 o'clock. And our pastor. Did he unload on us? I don't know how you can walk in here and not feel the remnants of the I Holy can. Spirit. I can. Um, he killed us. Yes. Didn't want it to end bad. Pastor has a word. I'm telling you, get to church. If you wasn't coming, come on. Just come as you are. Get it together. Get on to church. Okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday, St. Stephen. Oh, uh, we are celebrating. Listen, this is the Super Bowl for believers. Yeah. And today it is all about us and us proclaiming our faith. You guys look good out there. I see some uh, twinkling bunny ears up there in the balcony. How y'all doing up there? Come hey, we've on, got buddy. a one. Hey, look, look, we got, uh, look at the, oh, the one and only up there. Jason calls a killer. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Reverend Geneva <laughs> Nelson. Happy Easter, Reverend Nelson. We love you. All right, we've got a lot to get to today. We've got a really hefty show because there's always a lot going on uh, here at St. Stephen and also some big things going on at Simmons College. But you guys, can we show some love for one of our very own, uh, Mr. Norman Seawright? Uh, we'll put a hand on that Deacon Norman C. Wright. Or is it Minister Norman Minister, C. Wright? Right. <laughs> <laughs> look, last week they called him Deacon. That on purpose. They changed it. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stop being bad. This is Minister Norman C. Wright. We thank God for him. He yes. has recently retired as a pilot for UPS. Please give him a hand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Well, we want to congrats. First stop, everybody say happy birthday. Happy birthday. He celebrated a birthday the other day. You and your son celebrated. Y'all have the same That's birthday. Right. That is That's amazing. crazy. And it's so you celebrated. Name. What'd you say? Yes, yeah, my name. Has your name. That's your, bir- your namesake right there. So y'all both celebrated a birthday. And it was actually the official day of your retirement on Friday. Real quick, tell us about, you know, how long you were at UPS. And just tell us a little bit of your history. So, so I joined UPS in June of 92. Wow. And I, I was on the line for seven years before I went into management. I was a DC-8 engineer and a 727 engineer. Then I upgraded to first wow. officer on the 757 and then 767. Then eventually became a captain and a Czech airman on the airplane. Come on. Yeah. Yes. You, you, as, yeah, that definitely deserves a hand. But you have done so much. And I know for uh, aviation, somebody just doesn't go in there. Who was your inspiration? Who helped you make that decision? Man... You know what, it's, this goes, and I don't mean to sound cliche-ish, but it was just all God. Come on. Because as a kid, I was 11 years old, yeah. and I just happened to look up and see an airplane flying. And I said, man, I'd love to do that. Wow. And when I got to college, I went to school with an old Miss on a football scholarship, and they wanted to put us athletes in an easy A. So they put us in ROTC. Mm-hmm. And they put us in Army, nothing against Army, but I had an appointment to the Naval Academy. Wow. And I said, well, I'm going to go to the Navy, Rossi. Yeah. And I realized when I went to the Navy, Rossi, said, well, I didn't go to the Naval Academy. It just wasn't for me. And when I went to the Air Force RTC, uh, Captain Ronald Vaughn said to me, he said, you want to try for the pilot slot? And I wow. Said, yeah. So I studied, took the test, and the rest is kind of history. Oh, my goodness. Listen, and, and, and I love it. You know, that's what we love to do here on the show is inspire people. Yeah. And when we were telling them about, you know, you being a pilot, we heard a collective, ooh, yes, <laughs> right here, right here in our own congregation. Uh, why don't you share for us a little bit of some highlights from your career? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I started in the Air Force, and I was an instructor in the Air Force. So I, I flew the KC-135 on a global platform refueling the SR-71. I did that for a number of years, and when I joined UPS, it was just another opportunity. I was an international Czech airman, so I was all over the world. And, you know, here's the thing. This is crazy, y'all. Y'all know my wife, <laughs> and you know I'm crazy about her. <laughs> but when I was, I was a single guy, and I was sitting on a stump uh-huh. in Japan, uh-huh. and, and it was during Christmas time, and they had all these lights. They, they separated and, and I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking, and I'm like, man, this is beautiful. I don't have anybody to share it with. Mm. And so my, my wife was one of my best friends, and wow. she eventually became my girlfriend after she what? stopped running. It's the best, it's right. the best story. And then we got married. So, so, but just being, uh, and I've gone to some parts that I can't talk about, mm-hmm. but in being in a lot of those different areas, it was just an opportunity, because I'm a country boy from Mississippi, mm-hmm. and just given the opportunity to do that was just incredible for me. So I, wow. I, that was it, Crystal. And I, I know with me, definitely, uh, being in DEI work and how that's still important and representation is so important, I understand there's a need for more black, uh, black pilots. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about that in recruiting? You came in church uh, last week. Last Sunday, yeah. Said it about and so, you know, in, in this area and, and all around the, the country, we have what's called the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. And our, our purpose is to lead the next generation and, and, you, and here's something. Anybody who's in a position of authority and you're not thinking about the legacy Come on. and, and, and yeah. bringing somebody to replace you, shame yeah. on you. Yeah. And, and so we're trying to do that to, and give, give our children the opportunity. I'm, I'm not trying to make everybody a pilot, 
but I want everybody to have the opportunity to make make that decision on whether or not they want to be a one or not. Right. So are there age restrictions? Because I know when you was on the stage last week, everybody, you was like, anybody could be a pilot. Can you just talk? And I think you had some older people yeah, sitting said, there yeah. dreaming too. Like, yeah. Ooh, I can do I that. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, caveat, yes, everybody, anybody can be a pilot. The, yeah. the interesting thing is, and, and, and Kentucky, the governor just, well, they, they just passed some legislation to help. It's expensive mm -hmm. to, to fly and to learn how to fly, but, but we have means and ways, and there are so many different scholarships out there, Derek. Yeah. And, and as far as now our camp, the, the initial camp is from 11 to 14 years of age, and, and that's the Ace Academy camp, and then... If you want to learn how to fly airplanes, we start you at 14 years of age and go up to 65. Oh, wow. wow. He look good, y'all, don't he? Yeah, you do. 65 he years ages. old. <laughs> Listen, uh, we appreciate you. And as always, we love to showcase black excellence right here on this platform. We want to thank you for all of your years of service. Real quick, before we get out of here, because we tight on time, what's next? Oh, what, what hasn't been? You know, I tell people... UPS is getting away with all the stuff that God has called me to do. Uh -huh. and, 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 but UPS has offered me a great platform to s serve, serve St. Stephen, serve mm -hmm. the community, and to be a good father and a husband to my children and my wife so, yes. and the community. So uh, stand by. Stand by. As, you know, you know, I, got, you know I, I, did, I did one <laughs> album. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, somebody said, okay, it. yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you hey, so much. Thank you for this opportunity and I appreciate you. Derek, good to see you again. Always good. I told to him he needed to get back in the gym. Crystal, bless you, baby. <laughs> yes, take care. Thank you again. Get off the stage. Thank you so much. Everybody show some love for Mr. Norman, Norman Minister. 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 Norman Seawright. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he said they wouldn't let me be a deacon. I think we got some deacons out there that can assist you with that. All right, so many so much is simmering at Simmons College of Kentucky. They hosted their uh, victory parade for the Lady Falcons this past uh, week. It was a wonderful, wonderful turnout. And they've got some exciting things coming up, right? Yeah, really some good stuff coming up. And you know, as a Simmons Falcon myself, mm -hmm. you know, I'm excited that's about right. some of the stuff Rep that's going on. Rep the school, <laughs> Simmons Falcon. So we have two joining us for this wonderful uh, next portion of the show, and it's none other than and Dr. Ken Jokes. Dr. Ken <laughs> Jokes. Everybody show some love for Dr. Ken Jokes. He's a man that wears many hats, and he just don't plop them on his, hat, on his head. You wear those hats well, Pastor. He wears them well. God bless you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You really do. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Happy Day. Resurrection Happy Resurrection Happy Resurrection. And new to Simmons, you may recognize her name. She's done, she's uh, served in different capacities in our community, and now she's one of Simmons' very own. Miss Myra Rock, who is now the Chief of Staff at Simmons College of Kentucky. Hey. Good morning, Myra. Good morning. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. We're so glad to have you. All right. We've got some exciting things coming up. Uh, Pastor Ken, I'll let you go ahead and lead us with an important, with some, some important events that are coming up. Wow. You know what? Coming up on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 12 noon, we're going to be cutting the ribbon. Say cutting the ribbon. Cutting the ribbon. This is going to be a ribbon cutting event. We're going to be dedicating the, our, our new building which is our education building, and it's named after Dan Porter. Wow. So, so we're just blessed. She has been such a, a tremendous and powerful, positive impact on education in our city at so many different levels, in the classroom, as principal, yeah. and in governance yeah. with, with the, uh, the school board. Yeah. So we're naming this facility after her, and the ribbon cutting is at 12 noon, on Wednesday, and we hope everyone here will be here. It's at 844 South 4th Street. So it's an expansion of Simmons Campus, and we're just wow. delighted about it. I think an amen goes right amen. there. First off, the Porter family uh, has meant so much to the city of Louisville. You know, they were sitting, the Porter family was sitting on the school board, some of the first blacks to reside on JCPS's school board, and she carried on that legacy. And uh, I think it's so wonderful that uh, Simmons is going to be acknowledging her with this honor. Myra, as a woman, what do you feel about that? Well, it's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> we love to attach the two words, phenomenal and woman. Yes. Yeah. 
So it's absolutely phenomenal. And just a little bit more about the, the reasoning, you know, why is Diane Porter's name on this building? Um, as Dr. Jobst mentioned, she was a teacher, she was a principal, she was a longtime board member of uh, JCPS. She also served, um, she co-created with Dr. Lucian Yates the, let me tell you, let me get the name right. It was the um, great, yep, she founded with Dr. Lucian Yates the Great Louisville Alliance of Black School Educators. Wow. And uh, Dr. Lucian Yates is the endowed chair and distinguished faculty of our School of Education at Simmons College of Kentucky. And so it was really meaningful to him uh, to put her name on this building. And, you know, Dr. Yates has done something that is truly remarkable. It typically takes five years to stand up a school of education and a teacher, pro, uh, teacher education program. Dr. Lucian Yates accomplished this in three. Wow. Um, and so for us to be able to cut the ribbon on the Diane Porter Education Building on this Wednesday, as well as, and I don't want to jump ahead, but we have an open house that day from 4.30 to 6.30. Uh, we want everyone to come out. We want you to learn about our teacher education programs, our early childhood programs. You'll have an opportunity to meet and mingle with our staff. Um, and get to know that building. I wanna share something that's really significant. It's so important to understand the tremendous value um, that this program will add to the greater Louisville community as a whole. And I'm gonna read a couple of statistics. So research shows that black students who have one black teacher between the grades of kindergarten and third grade are 13% more likely to graduate from high school and 19% more likely to go to college. Yeah. Wow. Those same black students that have two black teachers, if you just increase that by one, and if they have two black teachers, that statistic jumps up to 32% more likely to graduate from college. <clears throat> and so Simmons opening the School of Education, um, we have early childhood programs, and we'll be certifying teachers, black teachers, to send out into our school systems is going to have a tremendous uh, positive value on our students. And, and I just can't say enough about how important it is for you all to support our program. So if you know uh, potential and prospective teachers, send them to, stu to Simmons. We, we'd love to have them. Yes. And, and this, is, this is one of our heritage programs yes. at Simmons. Simmons started out with a mission mm -hmm. of being able to train school teachers. And so it's just it, this... This is Resurrection Sunday, <laughs> amen. This is like coming that. back around I to like exactly the, the purpose for which Simmons was established. Yes. yes. Look at God. Look, yeah. look at, at God. Him. God. Look at God, yes. And I, I, I guess I just have to add, you know, there's so many wonderful things going on in Simmons, and this is just another one of those things. Uh, just me, myself, I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it. I'll start my third class on Tuesday. God is blessing. The program is amazing. And then I'll have my degree in a few months. And it's just working. It's just working. And it's HBCU right here in Louisville. You don't have to go in. It's right here. Yeah. So I tell you, I urge you, just like uh, Myra said, come out. Go to the open house. Check it out. It may be something for you, and if it's not for you, it may be for somebody that you know. Do not keep this to yourself. Absolutely, uh, but more than anything, come out in droves and let's celebrate, celebrate such a giant in education in our community that's being honored by Louisville's only HBCU, and that's going to be taking place on Wednesday. All right, we're heading to Thursday, or was it Wednesday evening? Yep. Oh, Wednesday evening, we certainly want to invite you to be a part of the service that's going to be here at 7 p.m. We're going to be hosting the Reverend Dr. DeForest Buster Soares is going to be with us. And also, um, we've, we've got musical guest, John Paul McKee, is going yes. to be with us as well. So that's going to be a tremendous tremendous service. You, you know what? It's the anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's mountaintop speech. Wow. And wow. so uh, that's going to be coming up. And wait, there's more, right? <laughs> there's more. There's a lot on more. On Thursday, on Thursday at 12 noon, right here at St. Stephen Church in the, the, the worship center, we're going to be having our second annual um, From Memorial to Movement 
program, and that's going to be featuring the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes is going to be with us, absolutely, from Friendship West. He's also the, the new executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition. Yes. So we're eagerly anticipating that. And I, I'm just going to tell you that this, this is a scoop for the scene. Uh-oh, right? we like a good scoop. There's a special announcement going to be made. Ooh. Special announcement. Now, you know what? you got to come to hear the announcement. But I'm just saying last year's announcement was about a $2 million yes. grant yes. that was given to Simmons. So I encourage, I encourage everyone on Thursday, be right here, be in the place for this wonderful announcement that you're, you're going to shout. Just, just be ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How many of you came last year to uh, this event from movement, from memoriam to movement? I know I was in the house. It was absolutely electric. And there was a lot of people who said, oh, I'm going to come, I'm going to come. And they didn't come. And they was like, man, I should have come. So I encourage you to get here early. Um, I still remember um, Dr. Freddie Haynes' sermon. It was something about uh, woke and okie doke or something. But he broke it down for us. But, I mean, just it was just such an amazing, amazing presence in this space and you had the speakers and then you had the singers and then you had that big award that was awarded to Simmons College and you said this year it's going to be bigger and better? Oh, I tell you, come and watch, come and watch, <laughs> come and watch. It, it's, but but I, I've got to let you know, it's, it's, it will be an historic announcement mm. with respect to Simmons, its mission and its potential for future growth. Whoa. You're going to want to be. I, I think I've said about all I can say. Yeah, look, that sounds look, juicy, look y'all. Y'all yeah, want to be here? Go. <laughs> right, right. You don't have to hear about it on social media. Be here to hear be it here first. Hear. All right? right. We encourage that. And I'm just well. going to say, I was here last year. Um, I took a long lunch to make sure I would I would be here. And so, if you're working on th Thursday, take the morning off, take the midday off, or take a long lunch. This truly, truly is an event that you do not want to miss. Amen. 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 Uh, is there anything else you, you're going to share with well, us? You know, one other thing. If, if you are absolutely providentially prohibited from being here, <laughs> I, I, I want you to know that it will be live streamed. So it'll be live streamed on the, the Simmons College of Kentucky Facebook page and, and also on the YouTube page. But please, there's nothing like being in the house. Yes, and let me just go ahead and shout out the musical guests. We're going yeah. to have uh, John Paul McGee, again, who's going to be joining us. And we're going to have our very own Jason Claiborne and Pat Matheson and Courtney Campbell. And it is just going to be a wonderful day of commemorating and celebrating. And uh, we encourage you to have your face in the place and if you just can't come, the event will be streamed live on Simmons College of Kentucky Facebook page and YouTube page. We look forward to seeing you there if you can make it, though. All right. Everybody show some love for Dr. Ken Jobes and Miss Myra Rock. Well, it's Easter Sunday, and we have eight candidates for baptism Woo! today. What better way to celebrate than to come to Christ and be baptized on Easter Sunday. It's amazing. Absolutely. Hey, um, and as we said, today is Resurrection Sunday, and so we have Minister Audrey up here to uh, kind of get our mind and our spirit ready for worship. What do you have? What word do you have for us today? I just want us to remember why we're here. I heard something on the way coming in about separating Easter from resurrection. Yeah. And what do the eggs have to do with Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we just need to make sure that we keep it clear that the resurrection is where Christ came to take away our sins. They, he, they thought they got him on, the, on Friday and killed him on the third day. But when he came to Sunday morning, he rose up with all power in his hands. And it's our, our, it's our responsibility that we're teaching our children the difference between an Easter egg hunt and what the resurrection Sunday means. It's okay to give them some candy. It's okay to give them a basket. But if they understand what the power of today really means, that's our responsibility, that we're teaching them that today is a powerful day. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about the eggs. It's about the man that got up because he died for all of our sins. When they nailed him to the cross, they thought they had him. But that wasn't the end of the story. Yes. He was just getting ready, just put a period in his earthly life. He's just getting ready for what he, was more to come. Amen. amen, amen. Look, Pastor Ken looking like he want to get on the back of that. <laughs> Pastor Ken, why does today get you so excited? 
We're, we're celebrating new life. Come on. Yeah. We're, we're ce- just, just when you thought it was over, <laughs> God always has more. More. And so yeah. that's, that's the, the celebration. God, God just put a comma after the cross. It was, not, it was not an end of something. It was the beginning of something. And that's something we all need to let percolate deep into our spirits. Oh, Amen. I like that word, yeah. percolate. Derek Carr. He took our place. Yes. He took our place. You know, he paid a debt that he didn't owe and Mm. one that we couldn't pay. Mm. And we thank him for that every day. And this this is what this is. Crystal said when we started, this is our Super Bowl. This is the Believer Super Bowl because this is what it's all about. He took our place. He died on the cross. He was persecuted. He was pierced in the side. He had a crown of thorn. They mocked him. They treated him all kind of ways. But he got up. He got up. To let us know that we can get up from anything that we're facing and anything that's going on. And the fact that we have eight people that are getting baptized today is a blessing. So if you are not on your way to church, you better get on your way. Share this link to somebody. God is being too good to us to be quiet about it. The choir's coming in. You might as well go and give God praise. He's already blessed you. He already got you here safe this morning. You might as well give him praise. He's already good. He's always better than he's been. You might as well give him praise. You might as well say thank you for what he's done. You might as well say thank you for what he's going to do. Reverend Ken already said he's going to give you more, more than you ever asked, more than you could ever think. And he said in his word, and for we know all things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Get ready for worship. God got some for us today. I'm telling you, our pastor preached an amazing word this morning that was life changing, that was life altering. But what we have to do is respond to it, to want to do something, to apply the word to what we do every day. So we thank God for our pastor for preaching and teaching every Sunday but this is not just about it's about telling somebody about the goodness of the Lord and thanking him for what he's done and what he continues to do I didn't mean to do all but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me yeah they playing uh Derek listen Listen, I, I thought everybody would be up on their feet, you know, and like I said, this is the Super Bowl for believers. I don't know about you, but God has been too good to me for me to just sit when I hear his name. As Pastor Cosby says, when Christians get to thinking, they get to thank you. Thank you. All I have to do is think about All what I gotta he did do for me today. Today, Come waking on. me up, starting me yes. on my way. He did it. Yes. I may not have the car I want to have, but I got a car. Come on. I didn't have a whole lot of gas, but I had enough to get yes. here. I know I got something to eat when I get out of here. Hey. You might as well quit tripping and give God what he's to do. You might as well quit tripping and give God what he's to right. He's real, y'all. He's real, and he got up for us, and he got up for you. So you should get up for him in the name of Jesus. And oh, my God. Come on. Woo! All right. I think we're ready for worship. Amen. Get ready for, let's welcome, let's get ready for worship. Thank you so much for joining us. And we want to welcome all of the visitors. Hey, the scene starts at 9 o'clock. We like this every week. So be sure to join us every week, all right? (laughs) <laughs> Let's get ready for worship. Be blessed. St. Stephen Church, these are your church announcements. St. Stephen, Stephen Church will host One Voice Prayer Movement Friday, April 5th, 6 p.m. in the Worship Center at the Louisville campus. Reverend Jeff Johnson and the Rivers of Living Water Band will lead in praise and worship. We are praying for the poor and oppressed in our city, state, nation, and the world. St. Stephen Church Prayer Ministry, Seek His Face Prayer Time, Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. in the chapel on the Louisville campus. Join us as we come into God's presence, not to ask for anything, but to thank Him, praise Him, worship Him, and to abide in His presence. St. Stephen Baptist Church Southern Indiana Campus, Women's Ministry Presents, Heart Saver CPR, First Aid with AED Training with the American Heart Association, Saturday, April 6th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please register in advance by contacting mcoleman at sfclive.org. The training is free and light breakfast will be available. Also note, certification cards will be available on site for $20. Not Done Yet Crew April Event. 
Tuesday, April 2nd, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., it's Gen Care Day. Learn about ways of staying healthy. Bingo and lunch will be available. Tuesday, April 16th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., all about your legal affairs, wills, and probate. Presented by Passion Fitzpatrick, attorney at law. Come learn about handling your legal affairs. Bingo and lunch will be available. Please register in advance for these events by contacting Reverend Josie Gilbert at jgilbert at sstlive.org or call the Family Life Center at 502-583-6798. St. Stephen Baptist Church, Hardin County, Kansas, presents Spring into Health Community Health Day, Sunday, April 7th, 2 p.m. Come and see and get everything you need for a healthy life. Some physical activity includes nutrition education, mindfulness practices, and opportunities for social connection. For more information, contact Deacon Tawana Harris at tharris at ssclive.org. 2024 Saints Football and Cheers. We're currently looking for coaches and accepting kids from ages 5 to 11 years old. Contact Ty Anderson at 502-724-0208 or Dinah Butler at 502-320-3599. And these are your church announcements. Join us for the Wednesday midweek service on April 3rd at 7 p.m. on the St. Stephen Louisville campus. Our guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. DeForest Buster Soares and music by Dr. John Paul McGee. You don't want to miss this. Simmons College of Kentucky and the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice proudly present the second annual Unity Service commemorating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination from memorial to movement on Thursday, April 4th at 12 p.m. This event will be held at St. Stephen Baptist Church, located at 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. Our keynote speaker is Reverend Dr. Freddie B. Haynes, President and CEO of the Rainbow Push Coalition and Senior Pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. With special guests, Reverend Dr. DeForest Buster Soares, Representative Jonathan Jackson and Dr. Samuel C. Tolbert. We have special music by Jason Claiborne, Pat Matheson, Christopher G. Smith, Dr. John Paul McGee, and Simmons College of Kentucky Concert Band. This event will be live streamed on the Simmons College of Kentucky Facebook and YouTube page. We look forward to seeing you there. Good morning, happy Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. He's risen. Today we've come forth for baptisms. And what a perfect day for this. That the Lord died for them. And they want to commit their lives unto the Lord. First we have Jalen Lamont Pitney Stanford. He's seven years old and he goes to Brecken, Brecken Ridge Lincoln Elementary. He's a purple belt in karate. And a heart ablation last week. Thursday. His father is Jason Pittman, Pitney Sr., mother, Lavinia Stanford. Jalen Lamont Pitt, Pitney Stanford, born in Louisville to Jason Pittman and Lavinia Stanford. Jason, Jalen has two older brothers and an older sister. He is seven years old, second grade at Breckenridge Franklin Elementary School. Jalen has been coming to St. Stephen for seven years. That's how old he is. <laughs> As a baby, he was a member of Coffee Cafe in Christ. Sunday school with Reverend Geneva Nelson was a teacher. Now he is a member of the Kingdom Kids Sunday School and Children's Church. Jalen loves coming to St. Stephen with his family. He wants you to know his great-great-aunt is the oldest member of St. Stephen, 106-year-old Ada Rogan. Jalen loves to play Roblox, has a purple heart, has a purple belt in karate, and plays flag football. His father and his mother is here. Could they please stand? The family? And any other family? We're all a family. 
family of Jalen stand. If you're any other family members, stand. You're welcome to stand. I don't know if they can hear you, but we'll take his confession of faith through the statement that was read. What a witness for Jalen. Uh, he said he's been here for his seven years, which means he's been here his entire life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we thank God for this witness of this young man who's come forward to give his life to Christ on this day of Resurrection Sunday, which means so much in the life of the church. This is the baptism pool, but we also call it the liquid grave. For it commemorates the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in effect, the baptism pool represents what you see is what you get. Amen? What goes down will come back up, and that's good news. Amen? Amen. So Jalen, upon your confession of faith and obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. Next we have Jace Mitchell. My name is Jace Mitchell. I attend Johnson Traditional Middle School and am in the seventh grade. My favorite subject is math. I am on the track team and enjoy playing basketball. In my free time, I like spending time with my family and playing video games. His mama, Lay, Laisha, grandmother, Yvonne, sister, Rose, Brother Roderick and his extended family, if you may stand. I have been coming to St. Stephen for a long time with my granny, Yvonne. She calls and wakes me up on Sunday mornings to go to church with her. I'm excited to become a member. I decided to get baptized because I want to give my life to Christ. In obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ and upon your recorded confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Our next candidate is Jaden Booker. My name, Jaden Booker. I was born in Texas, but raised in Georgia. I originally came to Kentucky for college over three years ago. While I was a student, I was told about St. Stephen from another member, and I've been coming to the church for two years now. His mother, Nia, Uncle Ronnie, and friend, Naish. I want to be baptized in the spirit to grow closer to the Lord and serve him properly. I'm very thankful for his everlasting grace and his mercy. I love the Lord, and that's why I want to be baptized. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Next we have Raylan Archie. I am Raylan Archie and I am eight years old. I go to Mill Creek Elementary. I love coming to church and I love dancing. I've been coming to St. Stephen since I was a baby. Her mom, Rayanne, grandparents, Mimi and Paul Paul, God, God, Granny, Dina Miller, and family and friends, if you would please stand. Her statement of faith is, I want to become a member of St. Stephen because I have learned a lot about God. I love him and want to be a part of his family. Family and friends of Raylan, please stand. Amen. In obedience to the great commission.
confession of Jesus Christ and upon your recorded confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Is from Louisville, graduated from Kentucky State, and grew up in St. Stephen. I have a passion for fashion, so I opened a strip, a thrift store. Hey, Amen. A thrift store to help the community. Her mother, Michelle, grandfather Norman, brother Jerry, and Aunt Tracy and Diane are here. If they will stand. Her statement of faith is. St. Stephen feels like home to me. I've decided to get baptized because I wouldn't be who I am or where I am if it hadn't been for the goodness of Jesus. I've been through enough to know he is the right way to go. Family and friends of Maya, please stand. Your present. Family and friends. Thank you for being here. Very glad In obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ, and upon your recorded confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I work at Shoe Carnival and go to Butler Traditional High School. I was brought up in church by my mom. Her mom is Denise McDougall, grandparents Charles and Dora Hunter, dad Walter Hunter, uncles, cousins, great aunts, and his godmothers are all here. They would please stand. And in that order is Carl O'Bannon, Carlicia O'Bannon, Dominique O'Bannon, Patient Wheat, Angie Wheat, Cynthia Taylor, Shemaya Taylor, and Malik, her boyfriend, Harper. That's because I want to be closer to God. I love living with the Lord, that's Psalms 23. I want to walk in the right path. Serve God, and I feel comfortable doing that here at St. Stephen. My mom named me Faith for a reason, and this name I will not fail. I have faith that forever, faith to believe, and faith to move mountains. Now, my dear sister, in obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ and upon your recorded confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Next, we have Lila Patterson. Layla Patterson. My name is Layla Patterson. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I go to Louisville Male High School, and I will be going to U of K. I've been going to St. Stephen since I was young. Her mom, Penny Wills, dad, Thomas Patterson, grandma, Linda Ward, and grandpa, Arthur Lee Wells. If they'll stand, please. She says, I choose to get baptized today to start a new position, positive chapter in my life. I want to publicly commit myself to the Lord because he publicly died on the cross for our sins. And now, my dear sister, in the obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ and upon your recorded confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Next we have...
of the Dariah Gail Elise Thomas. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I go to Carter Traditional Elementary in the fifth grade. My parents have brought me to St. Stephen since I was a baby. So there's Orville and Charmaine Thomas, Anna and Deborah, Marvin, great grandparents, and Diane and Deborah Thomas, grandparents. Her statement of faith, I want to be baptized because I want to understand the fact these only one God, there's only one God, and I want God to want be by my side for the rest of my life. Will their family please stand? sustain obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ and upon your recorded confession of faith I now baptize you in the name of the Father Son and Holy Ghost Amen Amen Next we have Aris Matthews I am from Louisville, Kentucky and I go to Indian Trail Elementary I come to St. Stephen with my mom, Naisha. She has her mom, Naisha Smith, Aunt Victoria, her grandmother, and family, and Alan Claypool. Would her family please stand? She didn't have a, faith, a statement of faith, but just her going there, walking up, and committing her life to the Lord, that says everything. Sometimes it's not what's written, it's what's done. So we thank and praise God for her. Amen. Let her know we're her family. Amen. Amen. In obedience to the great commission of Jesus Christ and upon your confession of faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let's give all our candidates a hand. For we know that baptism is a representation of going down in sin and coming up risen to be saved. Amen. We thank and praise God for each and every one of them. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He is here. In this room, in your heart, he is near, nearer than breath, heartbeats, nearer than you are to you, nearer than second chance or next opportunity, closer than tonight or yesterday. He is real, realer than touch, see, hear, smell, or taste, realer than reality. He is our reality, realer than joy, pain, sorrow, realer than the love of being in love. He is present like time, space, wind, silence, night. He is waiting like creation, like words on the tip of tongue, like songs that have yet to be sung. He is beauty, oranges, blues, every hue, every shade, sunset and sunrise. Whisper his name. He is holy, different, made human, became human, forgave human. He is spirit. He cannot be touched, explains like sweet seconds of prayers, like grandmother on knees, wood floor bare. He is son, distinctly three, distinctly one, the only one, the only wise, the only resurrector of lives. He is king, 
no earthly throne can house, no amount of elegant words can espouse. He is moments and voice, power of choice in word and deed, in fruit and seed, pierced side, nailed hands, nailed feet, innocent wounds that bleed. He is believe and trust. He is enough. He is all. He is call and purpose. Everything that we can sacrifice, he's worth it and more, much more. Our good deeds are mere pennies. We'll never even the score. He is behold and wow. He is who, what, when, why, how. He puts on the show. He's the one we come to see. He is soul's cry and sinner's plea. He is the epitome. He's the one no one can light a candle to or come within a million foot pole of. He is above. He is a father's love. He is maker of ways of earth and wind. Ancient of days has no fear. Have no fear. God is here. Happy Resurrection Sunday, St. Stephen. He is risen just like he said. Hello, hello. Today, we bring you Christ the Lord is risen today. We invite you to sing with us, and especially when we get to stanzas three and four. So we invite you to sing this selection with us. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give it up for these babies this morning. Come on. Come on in the balcony, lower level. Come on. This is how you test the thermometer of a church. You put the thermometer in the children's department, and we have one of the best children's departments in the world. Come on, clap your hands for Miss Courtney. So everybody that comes to church just on CME, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, and you bring your kids, now you can bring your kids all year because there's something for them to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, all right. Glory to God. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. It's Easter. This is what we do it for. This is the Super Bowl of Christendom. Yesterday I showed my son, he's 10 years old, and I showed him the passion of the Christ. Yes, because they show them everything else on TikTok. They show them everything else on TikTok. They show them everything else on social media, and they know more than the majority of us know. So why not show him what happened to Jesus? I challenge all of the parents in the room, sit with them and show them. As a matter of fact, some of us, we need to see it too. Oh, y'all thought it was just going to be about suits and dresses today, didn't you? We have an agenda. We came to give you Jesus today for he is risen. Come on, he is risen. This is the response. He has risen, you say. He has risen indeed. Let's try it again. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Let's try it one more time. He has risen. He has risen indeed. I serve a living Savior, and he's in this world. Today we come to bless the name of the Lord. Let's have some church today. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Tell him he lives. He's in this world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in this world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. 
Aren't you glad he lives? Thank you, Lord. Bless God this morning because he lives. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. My task is to read scripture this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus deserves a shout <laughs> because he lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Blessed be the God and our Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Spirit of the living God, fill us with your presence. Spirit of the living God, anoint us for worship in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for Good Friday. Had there not been a Good Friday, we wouldn't have any need for an anointing. We'd have no need for atonement. We would have no need for reconciliation. We would have no need for redemption. But we thank God this morning that there is a resurrection Sunday, that he didn't stay dead. Jesus was obedient to death, even death on a cross. We thank you, God, this morning that the tomb is still empty. We thank you this morning, God, for the representation of those that went down in that watery grave to come up and walk in the newness of life. God, we thank you this morning for new life. We thank you for victory. We thank you for peace of mind. We thank you for joy unspeakable. We thank you for grace, God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for love everlasting. God, we thank you that you've been good. We thank you that you got up because you live, God. We live. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you, God. And we came for no other reason but to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise for all that you accomplished for us on that cross. We celebrate you today, God. We greatly rejoice that you still live and that we live because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we say together, church, amen and amen and amen.
You do know it was, you do know it was by choice, right? Look at your neighbor and say it was by choice. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He would not. Can we worship the Lord in the room? You alone are worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. He did it for you. Look at somebody, tell him he did it for me. Now don't make it just about yourself. Look at somebody else, tell him he did it for you. You alone. as a corporate body Hallelujah. And God alone. 
Everybody open your mouth and sing this morning that he's the only living God. Hey, you are God and you are God alone. Hallelujah. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we bless him this morning? He's the only God who has ever rose and he's still rising in your life. Has he ever rose, raised up anything in your life that was dead, but now it's living? You were seeking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, but very deeply stayed from sin, seeking to rise over the God. Take your second, a third, a fourth chance, and we can declare you are God alone. He's still doing it today. Not just yesterday, but today and forever more. We declare you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. You are God. I didn't have the power to do it, the capacity to do it, but God, you are only one and God alone. You're the only one that's holy, only one that's faithful, only one that's true. Y'all looking, but everybody deserves to give God a great praise because he's the only God. You are God. He deserves it from you. He is worthy of all your glory this morning. You're God alone. Yes, you are. For healing our bodies, for bringing us back to life. Hallelujah. You are God and God alone. Hey, hallelujah. God alone. You are God. Hallelujah. Church for a moment. I know we gotta move on, but I need you to open your mouth this morning and let it know, God, I thank you for being my mother, for being a father, for bringing me out of a dead grave. Come on, church, give it to him this morning. Lift your hands. Let it know you're God alone. You don't have to do it by yourself. You are God. You are God. He's not just my God, Deacon. He's your God. He's your Savior. Everybody sing it one more time and we move it. You are. You are God. You are God. And God. Hallelujah. Good morning, St. Stephen. My name is Tiffany Gurley, and I am excited to be up here to welcome you all on Resurrection Sunday. All right. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby <laughs> and Sister Barnetta Cosby, we welcome you to St. Stephen Baptist Church. If you are online, and you are visiting with us for the first or 100th time, please give us a wave. We are so glad that you joined us online today. But if you are in the house today, I want you to stand up and look for the ushers. I think they have a little something special for you. So if you are visiting with us for your first time, second, 100th time, please stand. And let's give them a round of applause. All right, Amen. welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you 
here with us today at St. Stephen Baptist Church. We are glad that you chose us to serve on Resurrection Sunday. So once you have your special token from the ushers, you are welcome to take your seat. And before I continue, I'm going to let Derek take over. What's up? What's, what's up? up? What's up? <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Resurrection. So glad to be here today. Well, I stand to invite you to something very special, and that is the appreciation for our volunteer ministry. My name is Derek Carr, and I'm a volunteer coordinator for the Louisville campus, and we are so excited and so thankful to all of our volunteers. And we want to celebrate you, but guess what? You got to register. Make sure you register. Okay. You go to ssclive.org and you go all the way to the bottom and it's a, click, uh, a tab that you can click on and you register. If you've ever volunteered, we're talking about volunteers that I've done something, those people that I've called several times and you answer the phone, either send me the email, voicemail, whatever, and you've answered, please make sure you come. We want to celebrate you. But look, you know how black folk do. We got to make sure we got enough chicken. So in order to make sure we got enough to celebrate you, you got to make sure you register. So please go to ssclive.org. The event is for Saturday, uh, April the 6th, here at the Louisville campus from 12 to 3. We also will be celebrating our Indiana campus volunteers, and that will be Sunday, April 7th, right after morning worship with a nice breakfast. So if you have a man, come on, get this food, y'all. And then also in Hardin County on April the 14th, right after service, it will be a dinner for the volunteers of that campus. We don't know you come unless you register. Now, look, this is our time to show you how much we appreciate you. We are only appreciative of the volunteers, and we're only as strong as our volunteer ministry. So if you volunteer, you're a deacon, you're an usher, you're a trustee, you're the president of the Do Nothing Committee, make sure you come <laughs> register to sscLive.org to be a part. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So before I wrap this up, you know what time it is. It is our pass to love. You greet your neighbor on your left, your right. Pull out your phone. Take your selfies. Make sure you tag St. Stephen Church. SSC Live. Everyone stand up. Let's take our selfies for Resurrection Sunday.
glad the blood still works. Amen. St. Stephen Church, this Easter Sunday morning, it's giving time. Giving time in the Lord's house, giving time in your house as well. And you know what? Oh, God has been so good. And God's resurrection power, it still works. Amen. I, I know, I know my, my bank account needed resurrected. The blood still works. Gas in my car. I drove on a teaspoon of gas because the blood still works. God is in the resurrection business. Amen. We come, we come together today as a grateful people. When you're thankful, when you're thoughtful, you're thankful. Amen. When you're thoughtful, you're thankful. And so we gather in the, the strong and powerful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because it is giving time. Let's stand all through the worship center. Here's what Jesus said. For God so loved the world. Hello, St. Stephen family. This is Kevin James. Did you know that there are many scriptures that talk about giving? Not only giving, but our attitude toward giving. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So here's how you can give at St. Stephen Church. Give online at ssclive.org or you can text SSC Live to 833-602-0575 or you can cash at dollar sign SSC Live 1. You can also mail your check to the attention of the trustee board here at St. Stephen Church at 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. God bless you. Let's give together as God has blessed us. Shall prosper. It won't work. Come on, sing it with me. No. Just ain't one. Just ain't 
Church, we're coming upon a very important week 
in the life of our church this upcoming week on April 3rd and April 4th. There are some events that I'd like to share with you. You, you may well know, historically, April 3rd is a, an important day because that's the day of the Reverend Dr. Mount, Martin Luther King's mountaintop speech in Memphis, right? And then April 4th is the anniversary of his martyrdom, his assassination. We have some, uh, some programs that are coming up. We want to let you know about them. First of all, on the 3rd, on Wednesday, April 3rd, at 12 noon, we're going to be dedicating uh, the St. Excuse me. We're going to be dedicating Simmons' new education building, the Diane Porter Building. Amen. Amen. Diane Porter is such an advocate for education, so experience at every level, at, at the, the level of teacher and principal and administrator and, and governance. So that's going to take place at 12 noon. It's at 844 South 4th Street. So we encourage you to come up. It's going to be a ribbon cutting and a celebration. Later that afternoon, we're going to have an open house. So if you know someone who is interested in, in being a part of JCPS, being a teacher, you know what? If, if our children have one teacher of color in between preschool and third grade, they have a 13% higher chance of graduating. 13% simply because they had a teacher of color. Amen? It doubles if they have a second teacher of color. And it, it brings up the college-going rate to, to 20%. So that's, that's amazing to the glory of God. Please come and be a part of this dedication service on Wednesday, April 3rd, 12 noon, 844 South 4th Street. And then... Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we're going to be having our Wednesday evening service, and that's going to be featuring the Reverend Dr. DeForest Buster Soares is going to be with us. So, what, amen. He's a friend of St. Stephen Church. We've heard him. He's a, a, a powerful speaker. We encourage you to be here for that. Also, John Paul McGee is going to be bringing us musical selections. You don't want to miss that at all. Then coming up on Thursday... Thursday at 12 noon, right here where you are seated now, we're going to be having our From Memorial to Movement program, and that's going to take place uh, in, in celebration and observing the 56th anniversary of the martyrdom of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, the, our, our speaker is going to be... Uh, Oh my goodness, our, our speaker is going to be the Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes, who's coming from a, to, to us from Friendship East in Dallas. He's also recently been named the executive director of the Rainbow Push Coalition. So you'll want to be here. Now, now I go, well, just one more thing to say, one more thing to say. Last year, as you will recall, there was a significant, significant, significant announcement that had a lot of zeros at the end of that announcement. There was a significant announcement made last year at, at this celebration. And not to let the cat out of the bag, but I'm given to understand there is another significant, say significant, significant announcement that has to do with Simmons College of Kentucky. That, that wonderful edu educational institution that we know and love and support because it is Louisville's HBCU. And more than that, it's St. Stephen's HBCU. Amen? So mark your calendars Wednesday at noon, be at the dedication. On Thursday at noon, be right here for the, the Memorial to Movement celebration. And you know what? Be an inviter. Let somebody know. Amen. God is good. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. My house shall be a house of prayer. And so this day we have the, the prayers of the congregation that have been shared. We want to be lifting up the Carr family who recently lost their great nephew, Sean Carr. We're praying for Richard Porter who was recently hospitalized. We continue to pray for Tony Wilson Browder and for Wanda McKinney, who is recovering from surgery. We want to continue to pray for Ralph and Marilyn Smock, uh, along with their family. Ralph's brother, Clarence Smock's homegoing celebration was held this past week. Also for Jeff and Michelle Jones and the, the passing of his brother, we want to keep these 
prayer concerns in our hearts this day. Well, let's go to the Lord together. Let's pray together. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you on this Easter Sunday morning, Lord. When we, we come together with a lively hope and we come together in the light of your abundant mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you that each of us, because of your resurrection, we all have an inheritance that's, that's incorruptible and undefiled. Lord, your keeping power keeps each and every one of us. And Lord, we just want to thank you for those who came forward for baptism this day. We celebrate with them. We celebrate with their families. We celebrate with all the angels in heaven at, at this, this wonderful uh, event that has occurred here. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those within the sound of my voice who may have come into this service by pressing their way through, Lord. We know that many have come together with, with bowed heads and, and downcast hearts, but Lord, may the glory and the, the light of the resurrection shine in their hearts this day. Heavenly Father, we prepare our spirits to receive your word because we know that your word is transformative. We know that you have a rhema word for us on this Resurrection Sunday. So move in our hearts, Lord. Move by your Holy Spirit in our church and in our community. And we'll be careful to give you the thanks and the praise and the, the glory now and forever and forever and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen.
so much. You always do it. You never cease to amaze us and how excellent um, and dedicated you are to your ministry. And you have blessed us. Thank you so much. And to the band, bless you. And there's a guy right there named Kevin James who's been away from us for a minute. My man, my brother. Good to see you, man. Looking good, dude. Amen. Kevin's been away for a minute, but he's back. All right, and we're glad. All right, my God. It is so good to see everyone here. And let me give a shout out also to our greeters and our ushers and those who direct traffic and help us, assist us in uh, parking. Uh, thank all of you, all the volunteers, all right? Amen. Good to see everyone here. And it's only right that if, if there is a Sunday when we should be present, it's Easter. Amen. Because the Christian church rests. I want to thank God also for Friday night, Friday noon, and the preaching that took place in this place on Good Friday. We got some great preachers. Amen. Great preachers. Sister Audrey, so good to see you. She's wonderful. Man, your husband's all right too. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Those are my neighbors. They're good people. Um, but what took place Friday night? But if, if Easter is important because the Christian faith rests on three pillars. The incarnation, that's Christmas. This is it, three pillars, the incarnation, Christmas. And the message of Christmas is this. This is the message. God is with us. Emmanuel. That's the first pillar, right? Second pillar took place Friday. That's the atonement, the crucifixion. It's one thing to say God is with us, but when he died on the cross, when Christ died on the cross, now you can say God is for us because he died for us. God is with us. God is for us. And the fact that he rose from the dead says God is above us. That God is Lord of Lords, the conquering king, the conqueror of death. Amen? Amen? And it is a precursor to what we will experience beyond this life. Beyond this life, there's another life. There's another world. And you need to know that as you get older. And we are getting older. You sink your teeth into a piece of steak and your teeth stays in the steak. Right? Amen. You sit in a rocking chair and you can't get it started. But that's all right. But there's a world beyond this world, right? Amen. Praise be to God. We've got a lot of events this week, and let me just say this. Where is Brother Lewis Whitaker? Is he here? Where is he? Lewis! Where be the art? You see him? Where is he? Lewis here? Okay. He's here. Well, I'll, I'll get him. We'll catch him. Got some good news. Basically, Lewis is going to announce his calling Amen. to preach. All right? So I'll be presenting him, all right? But let's look at the scriptures together, okay? Um, take your message notes out with me. Luke chapter 24. And read it with me. I mean, you don't have to read it aloud, but just really... Pay attention to this, all right? Now that same day, <clears throat> two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing? Together as you walk along, they stood still, their faces downcast. 
one of them named Cleopas. Now, tradition teaches us that Cleopas, you might want to line his name, is the brother of Joseph. So that makes him the uncle of Jesus. Tradition also says that the other person who is walking with Cleopas is Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And they asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in the word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but they did not find his body stop here the first heralders the first storytellers of the resurrection of Jesus was the women now listen carefully the critics of Christianity in the first century rejected Christianity because they said it came from the testimony of women. But keep on reading. The women gave the report and they said it couldn't be true because women are saying it. And it goes on to say, but we but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, this is what the women said, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as Barnett, I mean the woman, <laughs> had said. Now somehow next year, women, from Women's Day, this ought to be your theme. All right? Said, and found it just as the women said. And we ought to just have a whole month of just talking about some things women said <laughs> that no one believed but came to pass. Don't forget that. Sister Mills, put that down, all right? <laughs> he said to them, verse 25, how foolish you are and how slow of heart you can't grow if you stay slow. Amen. He says, how foolish you are and how slow your heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not Christ have to suffer these things then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scripture concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open. Now listen. So we just read from verse 15 to verse 30 and they didn't know what they were looking at. So 15 verses of not having a clue and only a half a verse of, oh, I get it. And that's how, that's probably the ratio that we live probably the most, the higher percentage of our life not really getting it. And every now and then, in a half a verse, we say, oh, I see it now. <laughs> verse 31, just a half of verse 31. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he was disappeared from their sight. 
he asked, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? That's why I've entitled this message, A Good Case of Heartburn. Were not our hearts burning within us while we, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up, returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 with those with them assembled together and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen as and has appeared to Simon. Then the two uh, told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. In a real sense, all of us have been on the same road they were on. There is not a person in this room who has not experienced disappointment and sadness and despair and a sense of hopelessness and that nothing makes sense. This is how they're feeling. These are followers of Jesus and they witnessed what happened on Friday, the crucifixion, the betrayal, how Jesus had been turned over to the Roman authorities. The gospel says out of envy, out of envy. There's a difference between jealousy and envy. You have a right to be jealous. You don't have a right to be envious. You're jealous when somebody's trying to take what's yours. You're envious when you don't have what someone else has. Envy is when you are, um, you, you resent God's blessings in someone else's life and you ignore God's blessings in your own life. Because all of us have been blessed, not in the same way, but in some way. And these two persons, Cleopas and the unnamed companion, on their way to the village of, of um, uh, Emmaus, seven miles northwest of Jerusalem, and they're grieving, talking with each other about the events of the day, talking with each other, which is important when you're grieving not to go in a shell, not to go in, in the shoe, you old lady, you. Not to be in the corner, little Jack Horner. It's important to talk it out. If you don't talk it out, you're going to take it out. Amen. You suppress it. And so they're talking with each other about the events. When all of a sudden, Jesus comes in their midst and they don't know is Jesus. They don't have a clue is Jesus. And many times, God is with us. And we don't know God is with us especially during the difficult times in life. We say, where is God? And we say, where is God? Now, sometimes you don't realize God is with you because you evaluated it, everything on the present moment. Never evaluate life on the basis of what's happening immediately in your life because sometimes God will shut a door because God is getting ready to open another door. Thank you. Sometimes God will take your mess and say, I gave you a mess because I'm going to give you a miracle. Y'all not hearing me. And we don't see God. My wife told me earlier this week, she said, she said, Kevin, you know what? If, if my mother had not passed, I wouldn't be your wife. I wouldn't be here. My life would have gone in a different direction at the time if she was seven years old. She... My mama, I want my mama. And at the time, she didn't understand why. But if she, her life, God had a bigger purpose. Her mother's in heaven. God has a bigger purpose. And sometimes things happen. I know that's true with me. If my mother had lived, I'm t when she had not died when I was 10, uh, and my family moved away, I mean, it, it, it all worked. And just because you don't understand it now does not mean God is not 
with you. How many of you remember a man named Jacob? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He was a, Jacob was a mobster. <laughs> Deceived his father, stole his brother's birthright. Leaves, runs away, comes to a place called Bethel. And when he gets to Bethel, he sleeps, but he has a dream of a ladder stretching from heaven to earth. And God is sending angels up and down that ladder. And when he woke up, this is what Jacob said. He said, the Lord is here. He is in this place. And I didn't know it. And so many times when you say, Lord, please come with, be with me. He's saying, fool, I'm with you. Talk to me, somebody. But, but they didn't recognize Jesus was with them, and there are times in our lives when Jesus is with us, but because we're on the Emmaus Road, we don't know Jesus is with us. You got to trust him when you can't trace him. He is with you. But you know what? When you read the story and compare the accounts, not only did they on the Emmaus Road not know it was Jesus when they saw him, but none of the disciples knew it. The, the, one of the women who first told the men about Jesus' resurrection was a woman named Mary Magdalene. And according to John's account, John chapter 20, verse 13 says, The angels asked Mary, Woman, why are you crying? Mary answered, they took away the body of my Lord. I don't know where they put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. My God. And not only uh, Mary, but Jesus' own disciples, John chapter 21. Look at this. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the followers did not know it was Jesus. And let me ask you a question. Why didn't Mary know it was Jesus? Why didn't the disciples who had been with him for three years know it was Jesus? Why didn't the two on the way to Emmaus not know it was Jesus? Well, some of y'all have known me a long time. But if I get crucified on Friday and walk here on Sunday, you're going to say, where's, where's Pastor Cosby? Because once you've gone through crucifixion, okay, y'all ain't getting this. Let somebody put a crown of thorns on your head and pluck out your beard and beat you in the face and slap you, then put a spear in your side. Amen. So they didn't recognize him. Some didn't because of what took place at the cross. Now, that's what you call Cosby speculation. But you don't need to speculate when the text tells you why they didn't see him, why they didn't recognize him. And the text tells us, verse 16 says this, but they were kept from recognizing him. But they, which is the subject of the sentence, they, verb, were kept, which is the verb, which is past tense, is past, and it's in passive voice. And passive voice means that someone is acting on them against their will to keep them from sin. Which means the reason they can't see that it's Jesus is because the Holy Ghost doesn't want them to see it's Jesus. Now, I know what you're asking. You're asking, why did God and the Holy Spirit keep them from sin? Well, I'm glad you asked me to ask you to ask me that question. <laughs> the reason why Jesus didn't want them to see who he was was because Jesus wanted them to keep it real. You see, if they had, if they were walking sad and crying, all of a sudden Jesus shows up and says, hey, it's Jesus. And they said, hey, Jesus, we knew you were going to get up. <laughs> and they would start pretending 
as though they were not disappointed and they're pretending as that they had not lost hope. You know how we try to do in church? Amen. Pretend. One thing that irks me is when I go to Simmons, there's always somebody parking in the doorway. I put my car in, they park in the doorway. And it was a UPS man. And I said, I'm tired of some people parking right here at the doorway. So I said, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tell the receptionist and tell everybody, put a sign saying no parking. I was losing it. And when I went in, the, the UPS man saw me and said, Pastor Cosby. I said, praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> but had he hid the Pastor Cosby part, he would have got the real me. <laughs> and Jesus hid because he wanted them to, to just say what they were really thinking. It's like, you know, to Barnetta, she, um, you would never know she is the pastor's wife because she doesn't come off. She only doesn't sit up front. She sits up front because I asked her to, but she just, you would never, she, you know, she serves. She serves. And you never would know it. You never know. Now, Christine gonna let you know. That's my daddy. No, no, no. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but she never knows it but she told me this week she said because I was sharing with the thoughts of the sermon and she says you know what that happens to me a whole lot when people don't know I'm your wife and they say certain things about you that's why you gotta be careful what you're saying you don't know who's who <laughs> amen and, you know, I, I, when I first started preaching, there was a barbershop named Mr. Buddy. He was on 17th Street, Norman. Mr. Buddy. And I just started. And this guy was in there cutting up every preacher in Louisville. And when I got into the chair, I said, sir, what, have you seen and met that new preacher at St. Stephen's Church? He said, oh, yeah, I met him. I went to hear him preach. He ain't nothing. Mr. Buddy said, don't pay attention to him. He comes in and does it every week. But I didn't tell him I was Kevin Cosby. I just let him keep talking because I wanted the authentic person. How you know that people can, you know, some Sunday we just ought to sing the, as the invitational hymn, the OJ song. Smile in your face. How do you know that? <laughs> that people can be phony. And Jesus wanted them to keep it real and tell me how you fit. He said, tell me how you, he said, well, we thought he was this. We, we put our trust in him and he, he let us down and he did this and he did this and he did this. And let me tell you something. Don't be such a super saint that you bottle up your emotions. If you don't, you can't heal what you conceal. And the beginning of healing is the opening of your feelings. If sometimes you mad, quit, quit acting saying hallelujah. And I'll say, oh! I, I wish there was some sanctified profanity that we could use because there are times that even the best saint you ain't helping me in here wants to clock on somebody and it's not wrong the bible says it says, before it says, uh, it says in Ephesians 4, it says, 
uh, don't let the anger go down on your wrath. It says, be honest to one with one another. Don't let your anger uh, cause you to sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. But it says, be honest. And they're keeping it real with Jesus. And they said, we had hoped. They're on the way to Emmaus and they had lost their hope. Everybody I depend on, bless me, down, now, Jesus, you. We had hope that you were the one. And hope is important. Hope. Two mice were put in water to see how long they could tread water. The two mice treaded water for 30 minutes. And then they drowned. They took two more mice, put them in the same bucket of water. Let them tread water for 25 minutes and they took them out. Then an hour later, they put them back in the water and they treaded water for three hours. And the reason they treaded water for three hours was because they had once been delivered. And they thought in their head that if I just keep on keeping on, maybe, that since it's happened once before, maybe if I don't give up, that's called hope. And the only reason why some of you are treading water, believing that a better day is coming, is because you look back over your life and you say, I, I remember when God made a way out of nowhere. And if I don't give up, preach Kevin Wayne Cosby. Maybe he'll come through for me. And uh, they had lost hope. But then Jesus started talking to him. And the text says, he started, ah, I like it. He started, he said in verse 27, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning him. He said, let me take you to the Bible. And he started with Moses. I, I don't know what text he used, but I believe he may have used Genesis 3.15 where it says to the serpent, God says that you will bruise his heel, but he'll crush your head. And how at the cross, Jesus crushed the head of Satan. Maybe he took him to Exodus 12, where Moses said the deaf angel's coming, but if you put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, I'll pass over you. I, I don't know what he talked about but maybe he took him to Isaiah 53 he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquity maybe he took him to Daniel 3 where Shadrach Meshach and Abednego got thrown into a fiery furnace and when the king looked in he said there's a fourth man who looks like the son of God I don't know what he told him, but I do know that from Genesis to Revelation, everything in the Bible is about Jesus. Y'all ain't helping me. In Matthew, he's king. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke, he's the son of man. In John, he's the word made flesh. In Acts, he's the risen savior. In Romans, he's the justifier. In 1 Corinthians, he's the sanctifier. In Galatians, he's amazing grace. In Ephesians, he's the unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he's the supplier. For my God shall supply all your needs. In Colossians, he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 1 Thessalonians, he's the coming savior. In 1 Timothy, he's the mediator. In 2 Timothy, he's the cornerstone. In Titus, he's the model for good living. In Hebrews, he's the high priest. In James, he's faith through actions. First Peter, he's the suffering servant. Second, first and second John, he's love. Third John, he's righteous. Jude, he is the judge. And Revelation, he's the lamb. Because every prayer you turn <laughs> in the Bible <sighs> is all about him. Do I have a witness? And, 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 and when they heard the word, when they heard the word, they started getting excited. And that's why some of y'all messed up right now. Because y'all only come on Easter. 
you need a word from God. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. They heard the word and they started getting excited. The, 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 you could see them getting excited and then they got to Emmaus and the text says that uh, Jesus kept walking. Verse 28, and y'all got to get this. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me. Verse 28 says, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. He just, Jesus kept on walking. And then they said, hey, hey, Jesus, come go home with us. The same thing happened when Jesus walked on water. According to Mark chapter 6, amen, verse 48 it says in the last sentence, as Jesus was walking on the water, he was about to pass by them. They in a storm, in a boat, and Jesus is about to pass by them. They've been walking with Jesus, and Jesus is about to go on to another city instead of Emmaus. Why is Jesus passing by? Because Jesus will never impose himself on anybody if you want the Lord you got to call on him. you got to ask him you got to be like Bartimaeus who said wow on others thou art calling do not pass me by and the Bible says, I'm through, the Bible says that uh, he went in and they started eating. And when they started eating, their eyes were open. And as soon as they saw it was Jesus, guess what? He disappeared. Don't miss it. He disappeared does not mean he left the room. See, Jesus is omnipresent. He don't have to leave anywhere to go anywhere. Because he already where he's going without leaving where he was. So he, he's still in the room. But they didn't see him. Do you know why they didn't see him? Because he's trying to get them ready. For the time when they are going to have to believe that he's with them. And you can't see him. And you got to get to the point in your life. I don't care how broke y'all, I don't care how sick y'all, I don't care how frustrated y'all. That you got to holler, I know the Lord is with me. I don't see him, I can't touch him. But there's no way I could have made it through the hell I've been through. If the Lord is not with me. Because he got up. Then he get up. They, they tried to kill him, y'all. Death and grave met and said, we got to get rid of Jesus. The grave said, can you get him, death? Death said, I can get him. Death said, grave, can you hold him? I can hold him. So on Friday, death and grave got together and killed Jesus. Then death took him to the grave. And grave held him with a stone rolled in front of him. But death... That was in the afternoon, but death called Grave that night and said, hey, Grave, do you still got him? And Grave said, man, chill, I got him. I got Jesus. He said, okay, I'm just checking. I'm going to go out tonight. It's Friday night. I want to make sure you still got him. Saturday morning, Grave, death called Grave again and said, Grave, do you got him? Grave said, man, what's wrong with you? Why are you tripping? I got him. He said, okay, I'm just checking. Saturday night. Grave, death called Grave one more time. And said, Grave, do you got him? And Grave said, look, man, let me go check my inventory. And he said, let me check my inventory to see who I got. There's Moses, he's here. Abraham, Isaac, they're here. Jacob, he's here. Uh, Joshua, he's here. Ruth is here. Naomi is here. Uh, Zephaniah is here. Haggai, Malachi, and all your, all your, and Jesus 
He's still here. I just checked my inventory. He's still here. That was Saturday night. Death just couldn't sleep. So he woke up about 4 o'clock Sunday morning and said, let me go check myself. And when he gets to the tomb, the stone has been rolled away. And Grave is sitting over in a corner with his head like this. And Death says, Grave, you told me you had him. And Grave said, I did. Friday. I had him Saturday. But early, Sunday morning, he got up. And Death said, well, did he say anything when he got up? Grave said he did say just one thing. All power in heaven and earth is in my hands. And because he's resurrected, don't you forget, I don't care what you're going through. He's got all power because he's the alpha and he's the omega. Uh, he's alpha. He's almighty. That's A. He's almighty. He's alpha. He's B. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's C. He's a counselor. He's a comforter. He's D. He's a doctor. He's a druggist. He's a dietitian. E. He's eternal. And he's from everlasting to everlasting. F. He's my friend. He's the finisher of my faith. Oh, Lord, how many. F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He's good. He's great. He's gracious. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, he's my hero. He's my helper. He's holy. He makes me holler hallelujah. I, he's immortal. He's invincible. He's incomprehensible. J, he's just Jesus. He's justification. He's just. He's the justifier. Y'all ain't hearing me. K, he's Kevin's keeper. He's the kinsman redeemer. He's the king of kings. Can I preach? L, and he's the Lord of Lords. He's the Lamb of God. He's my leaning post. M, he's majestic. He's mighty. He's merciful. N, he's Nicodemus' night teacher. He's Nehemiah's wall builder. He's Noah's rainbow. N, he never leaves me alone. Do I have a witness in here? I tell you, he's all in the scriptures. Oh, he's Omega. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omni God. He's omni sneaky. He can sneak a blessing in your life and you didn't see it coming. Who? P. He's a potentate. He's a prophet. He's priest and his prince of peace. Q. He's a quickening spirit. He quiets my storm. Ah. He's the resurrection and the life. S, he's my sustainer. He's my sanctifier. He's my satisfier. He's my savior. T, he's my teacher. He's the triune God. He's a troubleshooter. U, he's unchanging. V, he's a victim on Friday, but he's a victim on fr Saturday, on Sunday. W, he's the word made flesh. He's a way out of no way. And when you're weak, worn, and weary, he's a well of water that can refresh your soul. Do I have a witness in him? X, X, he's got x-ray vision. He can see through you. He can see beyond you. He's X in algebra. X is the unknown. If you know the X, 
you can solve the problem. And when you know Jesus, you can solve any problem. Do I have a witness in here? Why? You know what why is. You know what why is. Help me with my why. His yoke. His yoke. His yoke is easy. And his burdens are light. And Z, he's Zephaniah's high priest. He's Zacharias. He's Zacchaeus, his dinner guest. And if you got zigzag lightning in your sky, he's able to say, peace, be still. And the winds and the waves will obey his will. Do I have a witness in here? Some of y'all came in here all jacked up, but you don't heard the word. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm feeling like running. I feel like shouting. I feel like dancing because whatever I'm going through, the Lord is with me. Do I have a witness in here? He's with you when you're up, when you're down, when you're well, when you're sick, when you got money, when you can't pay your bills, when hell breaks loose. Don't you let the devil make you think the Lord is not with you. Somebody holler, yeah. Somebody say he's good. Well, how good is it? Well, he's just like Coca-Cola. He's the real thing. He's just like Pizza Hut. Mmm, you good. He's just like Maxwell House Coffee. He's good to the last drop. He's just like American Express. Don't go home. Don't go home without him. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I got to get out of here. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. But I got one last thing that I got to say to you. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. God will take care. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Top three people say he will. He will. Holly, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Happy Easter. Come on and bless the Lord in this place as we stand all over the worship center. Amen, amen. That's good news. God is with us. Amen, amen, amen. Maybe you're here on this Resurrection Sunday and you don't have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today you can get to know him. Or maybe you're standing in the need of prayer. And you need one of these decision councils to pray with you. This is your time. This is your moment to come down. Or maybe you just need to reconnect with the church or reconnect with God. This is your time and this is your moment. The doors of the church are open. Why don't you come down, my brother, my sister, as our choir leads us in song. Why don't you come? Why don't you give it to Jesus, the one who got up with all power in his hands? Bless you, young man. Bless you, bless you. Just because he lives. Oh. Because he lives. Will you come? I can face tomorrow. Because. Trust God on this resurrection Sunday. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. Come on, 
Oh, you still got time. You still got time to come on down. Bless the Lord in this place. What a mighty word. What a mighty word our pastor preached. Amen. 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 We just have a few announcements. Uh, out there in the concourse, if you would like to get your family picture taken for Easter, you can go out there and get your picture taken. Amen. amen. And amen. And just have one another announcement. Uh, on April the 26th, our youth will be having a lock-in. So all you must have a permission slip from a guardian. So we ask you to go out there in the concourse to sign up for this lock-in. Also, they're taking sign-ups for the youth choir as well. Amen? Amen. 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 And we have one to join. Amen? Heaven is rejoicing. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord on the day. Amen. 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 If you arrived at the tithes and offering, you can continue to give across all our platforms and outside the door and offer toilet receptacles. And Maddie's kitchen is closed today. You got to go home and cook. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If our hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your word going forth in this place, Lord God. Reminding us, Lord God, that you still live, Lord God. That you still have all power in your hands. And for that, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. Help us to go out and tell a dying world, Lord God, that you still sit high, you still look low, and you still have all power in your hands. And for that, we just want to say thank you. As we prepare to leave this place from your presence, cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ till we return to your house once more. These and all the blessings we ask in Jesus Christ's name, let the church say amen and amen.